Congratulations on choosing an ETS Colibri, which is a very high-performance electric expansion valve. In this video, we're going to show you how quick and easy installation is. As you probably already know, the ETS Colibri is an electric expansion valve with a unique design that makes it much smaller and lighter. Mounting the ETS Colibri is easy and flexible. 1. Mount the ETS Colibri with the electrical connection facing generally upwards. That means the mounting position can be between the 9 and 3 o'clock orientations. The ideal position is at 12 o'clock. Avoid mounting the ETS Colibri with the electrical connector facing downwards to prevent dirt accumulating in the connector and disturbing the electrical signals. The ETS Colibri is very versatile and works with flows in either direction. The normal flow direction is indicated with an arrow on the product. You can use the sight glass to determine the flow direction. The indicators in the sight glass give you a direct indication of the system's moisture status. There is probably no valve on the market as flexible as the ETS Colibri. Now let's see how to braise the product. As you will see, there are some small yet vital differences between the ETS Colibri and traditional electric expansion valves. These features make brazing easier, faster and more economical. Brazing Tools for brazing Apart from the valve itself and the piping, it's important to use the correct solder material and brazing torch and properly size connections. Starting with the valve, make sure all the connections are correctly sized. As you may know, the ETS Colibri has a bimetal connection with stainless steel outside and copper material inside. This makes the brazing process much faster thanks to the low heat conductivity of bimetal compared with pure copper connectors. This is a major advantage because there is no need for wet wrapping during the brazing procedure. Having a bimetal connection saves a significant amount of brazing time, around 30%, compared with a valve with a copper-to-copper -copper connector. It also increases brazing quality and reliability. Traditional valves use copper connectors to copper pipes. The ETS Colibri's bimetal connection enables you to use the same type of cost-effective materials. We recommend Silphos 5-15% for reliability and cost-effectiveness. When you braze the valve, we strongly recommend that you use a protection shield gas such as nitrogen. This will give you clean brazing without any formation of oxides inside the pipe. Make sure you use a correctly sized torch nozzle for brazing the ETS Colibri valve. For smaller valves such as the ETS 12C and ETS 24C, we recommend a single nozzle brazing torch. For bigger valves such as the ETS 50C to 100C, multi-flame heating nozzles are your best choice. For the bigger Colibri ETS 50 and 100 sizes, we recommend a 6 to 9 mm solder nozzle or a 3 to 4 mm for single solder nozzle torch. Make sure the ETS Colibri is positioned safely. The valve should be open at least 50% and ideally fully open. ETS Colibri valves shipped directly from Danfoss are always fully open and ready for brazing. In single flow applications, make sure the valve is positioned in the normal flow direction. Remove the cap and the access cap if there is one. We recommend that you change the tube with nitrogen before brazing. Depressurize the system before brazing. The three important parameters in brazing are the time, the temperature and the gas flow rate in the torch. Use the reduced flame for brazing the valve. When you start brazing, heat the copper pipe for 20 to a maximum of 30 seconds. 
Then move the torch to the valves by metal connection and heat it for about 10 to a maximum of 15 seconds. Always point the torch away from the valve and keep it moving to ensure uniform heating. Overheating may affect the product's functionality. You must keep the temperature of the valve as low as possible and always below 150 degrees Celsius or 302 degrees Fahrenheit at the joints, as shown on the picture. Make sure the flame is always pointing away from the valve. The flow of protection gas should always be from the side opposite the brazing point. This is easy to understand because we want to remove heat from the valve. After brazing, you can apply water at the connection between the valve connector and the valve housing to lower the heat impact on the valve body. This is a good brazing practice followed by many certified brazing technicians. However, if you want to apply cooling water at the joint between the copper and the bimetal connector of the valve, wait at least 10 seconds to allow the materials to adapt to the new temperature. Note that applying cool water just after brazing could harm the brazed joint, so make sure you wait some time before applying cooling water to the connector joint. Brazing must only be carried out by a skilled and certified technician. Let's look at that again, but with a bigger unit. The main steps are the same, but you use a bigger torch size. You still stay within the same time limits, that is, heating for a maximum of 30 seconds at the pipe and a maximum of 15 seconds at the bimetal connector. If the connections mentioned in the brazing procedure cannot be met, apply a wet rag round the valve connector before you do the brazing. Apply the correct amount of solder material at the point of the torch flame. You should be able to see the typical so-called ski slope. If you use too much solder, the braze joint bulges outwards. This not only wastes money and harms the environment, but also weakens the braze joint. Let's compare pipes brazed with and without protection gas, that is nitrogen. You can see how clean the inside of the pipe is when nitrogen is used. You can see the oxidation inside the pipe when nitrogen is not used. Electrical connection. The ETS Colibri is designed with a standard M12 connector. Make sure you align the guide of the M12 connector as shown in the drawing. Push it fully into place before you start tightening the screw connection. The valve is now mounted and ready for use. We are using the recommended EKD316C controller. Start by connecting the valve to the EKD316C controller. Color coding makes this easy. If you use an M12 cable from Danfoss, simply match the corresponding colors as explained in the instructions. Depending on your system requirements, connect the temperature and pressure sensors and other connections applicable to your system. The valve is now ready to go. Remember, if you would like more information about your ETS Colibri expansion valve, simply scan the QR code from the product with your mobile. This takes you directly to the ETS Colibri website, where you will find the information you need. If you have any questions, please contact your local Danfoss representative.